Hello, it's Doris with Aldi Books, and I have been reading Aldi Books already this month. It is the 8th of September where I am, and I've already read nine books. Crazy, and I'm halfway through the 10th. So, if you want to know about the first three, which were Anya's Ghosts, Flatland, and Tar Hollow Trends, uh, those are in my September, Shorty September Strategies vlog that I posted, um, I think on day one. Today I want to talk about the six others that I have finished. So, as Patrice Jones says, let's just get right to it, shall we? So, Hex was the fourth Shorty that I read so far by Jenny Fagan. This one was recommended to me by Heather from Soggy Expat Book Nerd, um, probably last September, to be honest. I had been looking for this book for quite some time and I had kind of almost given up hope. Um, I can only get things pretty much online where I am now in China. So um, yeah, but as I was looking up where I could find, I had to color code my my shorty list, a la Heather, uh, also. Um, I did look up Hex one more time and lo and behold, it was finally there and I was so excited. So, Hex, fabulous, five stars. Uh, this is very atmospheric. It is set in, I believe, maybe the 1600s. Uh, it's during the time of all of the witch trials, and so we've got this young woman, girl, really, she's 14, 16, uh, and she is in the dungeon and um, going to be hanged in the next two or three days. And so um, a medium and from a seance from the future, modern times, comes and spends time with her during this waiting period and oh, so good. Uh, major feminist vibes with this one and you just really need to read it. If you're into that sort of thing. Um, historical fiction, oh, vibey, so atmospheric and yeah, just great. All around fabulous. The next one um, I took up was the Moth Keeper by Kay O'Neill. Uh, this is the woman that wrote Tea Dragon Society, which is very popular on the booktubes. So this is another graphic novel fantasy. This one is set in a world where there's like a day village and a night village. You know, the night people are awake and, you know, moving about and doing their thing during the night. And there's a myth concerned with this that the the moon goddess uh, felt bad that nobody, you know, spent time with her. So these people decided to. And they have these moths that are a gift from the goddess and they have to take care of them. And so this young apprentice uh, does just that. Uh, she obviously has a mentor and her best friend um, also has a mentor. Her best friend is uh, kind of like a herbalist and healer. And so you just, you know, watch her become um, a moth keeper and, you know, the mistakes she made. And it's got a beautiful message of, you know, mistakes are permanent and, you know, we learn from them and move on and, you know, friendship and oh, it's really really sweet really sweet story um the artwork in this is absolutely stunning like absolutely absolutely stunning i would put these prints all over my walls they were that beautiful especially if you like nature flowers um oh, they're beautiful landscapes wow anyway Five stars for the art, for sure. Uh, story, more of a four star. Um, I've said this a million times. I'm not big on uh, stories in the graphic novel format, but this one 
did keep me engaged, so very good. Um, then I read, um, oh, Moth Keeper, I got off of Alice of Page's channel, a recommendation from her. Then the next one up is uh, I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shreya. Uh, I heard about this one on Brian from Bookish. And this one is a trans woman talking about her fears, um, living her life and how difficult it is and, you know, unique perspectives from when she lived life as a man and how that felt out in the world versus um, now that she's a woman and how that feels out in the world. And just super interesting perspectives. Again, another feminist vibe here. And I just really like, there was another, there's another feminist vibe coming. And it's just been really rewarding to read varying perspectives on feminism, just kind of in more story form and back to back. Um, so like Shorty September has all of the brilliant vibes. I just cannot believe that I haven't done it before. Um, that one was super short and I would have rated probably a four star as well. Really enjoyed it. Um, and then, oh my gosh, Comfort Me with Apples by Catherine M. Valente. Wow. So this one was also very atmospheric. So good, so good, five stars. I got this one off Heidi's channel um, from My Reading Life. And this is, this is the other, you know, kind of feminist vibe one, but this one is a woman who appears, you know, from the sounds of it at least, super happy in her marriage. Um, very happy being just a wife and taking care of the home and her guy and yeah you think everything is perfect you know paradise but she keeps saying i was made for him you know just a part of her dialogue it just dropped along here and there and you just immediately pick up on that and you know with the feminist aspect questioning like yeah, it's great to, you know, be in a relationship and, you know, be focused on this other person, but you're also yourself, you know? And I won't go any further into this, but, mm, mm, this one just, wow. <laughs> it developed, let's say. And uh, I enjoyed the process. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Good book, good book. Then, oh, that one was five stars. I think I already said that one. Uh, and then I read Miss Eyes Sandwich by Miko Kawakami. This one I heard from uh, Rodika from The Midnight Reader, who is new to BookTube, so check her out. Uh, this one is, I would say, Slice of Life, and not, I wouldn't say coming of age, but kind of that transition between tweenhood, tweenness and becoming a teenager, just right on the cusp of that age change. Um, absolutely delightful read. Uh, kind of in the four star, like totally kept my focus and loved it, but it wasn't like super wow, you know, but really good. Uh, this one is um, a boy who like, oops, sorry friends, I'm still here. Um, oops. <laughs> so it turns out I dropped it the perfect moment because a coworker came in. <laughs> Anyway, Miss Ice Sandwich. So this little fella uh, just kind of falls in love with, not exactly, but he becomes um, kind of mesmerized by this woman that works in the supermarket, the one that works the deli sandwich counter. And he is just entranced with her big eyes and her 
um, metallic blue eyeshadow and yeah it's very quirky uh, very enjoyable fun read um, but it talks about like friendship and you know that transition from being a little kid to having like relationships you know not not necessarily romantic ones but yeah cool read cool read very interesting development in and again it's not like a big plot or anything it's slice of life but it kind of has themes that are interesting to uh, read into and then the last one for today is Messy Roots, a graphic memoir of a Wuhanese American by Laura Gao. So, I don't know if you noticed, you probably didn't, but I've got a little OCD thing going on here. <laughs> I just randomly ended up reading The Pinks Are Fiction and The Blue Is Nonfiction. I just randomly started a pattern, and so once I saw that the pattern was happening, I had to continue with it. So. I read again to fiction, so I had to pick up a nonfiction. So, graphic memoir, graphic novel memoir, graphic novel, it's not a novel, a graphic memoir. These are my jam. I love graphic memoirs. This one is uh, a woman who, she's kind of, this is kind of a coming of age during the COVID, and she is. Um, an immigrant she immigrated to the US when she was very young and is dealing with so many things but she's dealing with her own prejudice like she didn't even find out that she was being kind of racist against um, other Asians the Fobbies fresh off the boats until she got all the way to college and she uh, went to university on the East Coast, maybe? Anyway, she went to university in an area where, um, hello, I'm here. Sorry, my phone is not recognizing me. Um, yeah, she, you know, went, grew up on the west coast where you know if you'd been there a while you felt like you were different than newcomers and so she would also trying to fit in herself in a mostly uh, white high school situation she would make fun of other recent immigrants and then she you know found out that's not really cool i shouldn't do that uh, when she went off to college so that was super super interesting to think about and also, you know, obviously the COVID situation and her being from Wuhan, which, um, you know, of COVID fame, that was interesting to think about. She also um, deals with identity in many other ways, not just the immigrant um, versus new immigrant and fitting in, but also um, deciding, you know, who she was, her sexuality with, um, realizing that she was uh, queer in college as well. So yeah, thoroughly enjoyable novel. And this one I would give, um, not novel, sorry. It's just graphic novel, graphic memoir. Uh, I would give this one a five star as well. Really, really enjoyed um, the thoughts from that one. So it's been a fabulous reading week and I'm starting mid-month book bash vlogging this weekend and I will be back for another Friday reads after that and I hope to keep up the momentum so thanks so much for watching and I'll be back soon. Bye!